Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. This could be a story about three dolls. It could be. Song, did you remember about the milk? That's Miss Boswell. Aunt Minna. Young, attractive, a trifle earthbound. Yes, miss. Plenty of milk for a young person in refrigerator. And that's Song. Not quite so earthbound. But then Song was born in Peking, in China, where people have been around long enough not to disbelieve, merely because they don't understand. But this didn't happen in China. It happened here in Sausalito, across the Golden Gate from San Francisco. Mm, well, it's a miracle we've gotten the place ready at all. Very healthy for house to be lived in again, especially with young person. Oh, Song. About the young person, about Anne. You understand she's had a terrible shock. Her mother. Yes. We'll have to help her try to forget it. We want to avoid reminding her of it unnecessarily. Then why picture? Hmm. I don't know. My brother especially asked that it be here. Oh, I don't mean that she should forget her mother or anything like that, but... Very sympathetic, but intelligent. Exactly. Oh, they're here. Come on. Come on. I'm sorry. Will you help with the things? Yes, do you, Mama? Well, where is she? Ann? Ann, are you going to sit in there all day? It's incredible. Her eyes and her mouth is exactly like her. You remember your Aunt Minna? Aren't you going to say something? Well, of course she doesn't. She was just a baby. Cat got your tongue? She's just tired from the flight. Oh, Song. This is Song. He was with the other people who had the house. How do you do, Song? Well, Pa, come and take a look at your new home. Come on. Oh, Paul. One of the legs came off that blue wing chair, but apart from that, everything seems to have arrived all right. Well, how do you like it? Did you get the picture? Mm-hmm. I put it in the living room. Paul? <laughs> you know, there was just enough furniture for down here. But it looks quite good, don't you think? It'll be fine, Minna. You know, we haven't even had a chance to clean upstairs. Paul, I suppose you thought I was crazy when I wrote suggesting a place this size. But really, at the price, it is... It was a great buy. It was. It was an incredible buy. And, you know, you'd think that there was something wrong, but it's perfect, really. And there'll be plenty of room for all three of us down here. Do you like it? What does Miss think of New House? Who's up there? No one. Empty looms. No. They're not empty. And dear, come on, honey. There's so much else to see, and I've got a surprise for you. They're not. Anne, did you hear your aunt?
Why can't you ever do anything at once when you're first told? Oh. Oh, I know. I'm tired. Well, come on and let me show you what I have for you. Do you like them? Are they for me? Of course they are. I hope you don't think you're too old to play with dolls. All little girls should have dolls. It's very good for developing the maternal instinct. Come on, Anne. Help yourself to some lemonade. Song made it with fresh lemons from the garden. Your daddy and I are going to have a little pick-me-up, too. And then I'll show you the rest of the house. Paul? Oh. I fixed up your study just like you had it in Denver. You can fiddle around with it. Oh, bourbon and water? Yes. Anne! Anne, you did that deliberately! I oh, didn't you! You did it deliberately! Stop it! You hurt her! She did! I know her! Why should she? Because she hates her. She hates her! How could you say such a thing in front of that child? Did it have to be you? And we've got to be patient with your daddy, the both of us. You're the one to help him through this. Because he loves you. He doesn't love me. He only loves mommy. He wishes I was killed in the accident and not mommy. Don't you ever let me hear you say a thing like that again. It's just that he's hurt now. And when people are hurt, it's much harder for them to show their love. It'll take some time for him to get around to loving you again. No, he won't. He didn't before and he won't ever. And, darling, you're just upset. I guess it's like you and Uncle Jeffrey. Sometimes I wish Daddy and I could get divorced. Hey. Miss like new house. Real cool, eh? Can I go up there? Honey, that's a dead part of the house. We're not using that now. But I want to see something. Then we go on tour of inspection. House quite old by some standards. Built in the 1890s. But has survived many decorators since. Last tenant used as one of many guest rooms. What happened to them, son? They decided the house was uncomfortable. That's ridiculous. Not intelligent people. This used as master bedroom. Yes? Eh? Someone called me. They called my name. I never knew this was here. Old nursery. It's filthy. Couldn't have been used by the last people. No, not used by people. Aunt Minna? Hmm? Can I have this for my room? Oh, now, Aunt. Please. You can't sleep up here all the way from everyone else. Yes, I could. I want to. Besides, it would cost a fortune to heat. And you'll see. When we get your room all fixed up downstairs. It's happier here. <laughs> More coffee, Miss Boswell? Yes, please, son. Aunt Mana, mm-hmm. why did Daddy start to work right away? Oh, he needs to be kept busy. Then tomorrow, will you wake me up real early before he goes? Yes, of course, darling. I'm supposed to kiss him goodbye.
Everybody sleep well last night? After all the excitement yesterday? Beautifully. Perhaps somebody too excited to sleep. Hmm? Last night, coming home from movie, I see light burning upstairs in old nursery. Oh, you must have imagined it, Song. We were all in bed by nine. Or perhaps a song imagine. Miss, not like flowers. Sometimes. But they don't talk to you, eh? Maybe because Miss not listen. Voices of flowers not so easy to hear as other voices. Will you help me get the music box? Music box? Come on, I'll show you. Nothing up there, miss. Only suitcases and boxes. Yes, in back, way in back. Who put it there? Your thing should be in your room. Oh, it isn't mine. It's theirs, but they said I could have it. They? Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. Nothing here? Yes, way in the back. Thirty years lost. Thirty years since I've seen this music box. Thank you. Aunt Minna says it's the dead part of the house. Anything loved is not dead. It's nice having friends here. All right, we'll try it once again, though. I don't care what you say. Many are going to spoil that child. Oh, honestly, Paul, you spend one Saturday giving her a playroom you'd think she'd ask for the moon. She'll be sick of it in a week. Could be. But in the meantime, you could at least act like you're interested in where yes, she sir. could... Now there's nothing. Probably why she's been sneaking up here all the time, rebelling because she knows you don't want her to have a playroom. That's nice, too. It's your own fault. The child's got to assert herself somehow. That's the screwiest darn thing I ever saw. Can't you find the blockage? There isn't any blockage. I put a whole new pipe through. The gas comes on in every room except this one. I'm sure the gas is turned on down at the main. I tried everything. Don't ask me why, but the gas just doesn't come on in here. You better get an electric heater or something. I've done all I can do. All right, thanks anyway. Just leave the bill downstairs. Hmm. Isn't that odd? Yeah, I gotta waste 50 bucks on an electric heater. Just so she can get sick of it. <laughs> Boy. Will you stop it? Stop what? Honestly, Paul, you become a very selfish man. What do you want her to do? Hate you so you can pity yourself even more? Oh, don't start that. Well, let me tell you something. I don't pity you. And anybody, at least you know what it's like to be loved. Oh, man, I... I don't know how to approach her. She embarrasses me. Oh, it looks beautiful. Thank you, Aunt Minna. Oh, don't thank me. Thank your daddy. He did it all. You know, we can't get that heater to work. I knew it wouldn't. Oh, they told me. Who? Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. Oh. Who are they? This is Jennifer, and that's Rose, 
And that's Mary. You mean they talk to you? I'm going to go fix some lunch. it here either. You'll never be able to stand it anywhere until you learn to accept Janie's death, learn to live with it. Go home, Paul. Go back to Denver where you belong. It'll be so much easier for you there. Your friends are there. They'll be able to help you where Anne can feel a little security. I hate Denver. I hate everything that reminds me of her. What about your daughter? What about Anne? I suppose it'd be easier if you could run away from her too. Maybe. Well, then why don't you go on? Oh, come on, Minnie. This is none of your business. You're going to listen to me. That child sits upstairs in that room all day long with no one to talk to but a servant and an aunt she doesn't even know. Even those dolls have become more real to her than her own father. Well, I wish she were mine. I only wish she were mine. She told me to call her just as soon as I heard the car so she could be downstairs to kiss you home. Anne? Oh, Daddy. What are you doing? It's a dance I learned called the Charleston. Oh. Well, go on. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you could Charleston. Oh, you'll be a smash with that when school starts. I just learned today. Oh, your Aunt Minna? No, Jennifer Rose and Mary taught me. They say it's all the rage and when I get to go to dances. Honey, there's no need for you to make up stories. I think it's swell if your Aunt Minna teaches you. I'm not telling stories. Okay, have it your own way. It's true, Daddy. Jennifer Rose and Mary teach me everything. Come on. I won't. I won't go. I won't go to Denver. I won't. I won't. I won't ever leave them. Ever, ever. Anne! All right. What chapter is this in How to Raise a Child? I tell her we're going home and look what happens. Oh, no. Paul, listen. No, I'm, I'm trying to act like a father at least. And look what I get. Now, I'm telling you, this doll business is silly and it's going to stop right now. Oh, now, Paul, wait a minute. Perhaps the dolls have become too real to her, but after all, whose fault is that? Let me talk to her. Miss, be most careful. Trust Miss will not try to interfere with Jennifer Rose and Mary. Ah, listen, if I had my way, those dolls would have wound up in a trash can weeks ago. Important mistake. Jennifer Rose and Mary, not dolls. Oh, yeah. Then has got a name for it. Something to do with fantasy taking on reality. <laughs> no. This is fantasy made up by Miss Anne to hide truth. What? Nursery occupied by something other than dolls. What are you trying to say? Previous tenants moved because of this. Sounds of children weeping most pitifully in still hours of night. Song, are you trying to tell me that room is haunted? Yes. Very occupied. In the most friendly possible way. Come on. 
during Roaring Twenties, owner of house, also father, father of three little girls, and shamefully neglectful of saying. Many times children left here in house alone. Alone one night sleeping in nursery. <laughs> Touch me. Touch me, then it tried to hug me. Oh. Are you all right? They didn't mean to scare her. What happened? Oh, we can't stay in this house. Someone tell me what happened. Jennifer, Rose, and Mary, they're not dolls. They're not dolls. Song, did you put that story into Anne's head? No. Miss Anne, tell me story. I listen. I've heard story many times. Same story. All right. So three children died up there from escaping gas 30 years ago, but you could have heard it from one of the neighbors. I've seen no neighbors. Did Miss Boswell teach Charleston dance to Miss Ann? Ann! All ready to go? Yes. Paul. Come on, Minna. Oh, I know it's the 20th century, and I know it's impossible. But I also know something touched me. Listen, I've had enough of this nonsense. Anne, come on down here now, dear. We're going. Paul, oh, you didn't let her go up there. Why not? There's nothing up there that can hurt her. No? Then why are you in such a hurry to get her out of the house? Oh, I'll tell you why. She's my child, and I don't want her head stuffed full of a lot of crazy ghost talk from both of you. We're going home now, and I'll drag her out of here by the ears if I have to. She's my child, and I want her with me because I love her. I love her. Daddy? Come on, dear. We're going now. No more arguments. I was just saying goodbye to Jennifer, Rose, and Mary. They said fathers are very nice people, and they thought I should go. I'm ready, if you want me. Oh, I want you. I want you. Come on now. Get your coat. Come on. We're going to miss the plane. Oh, that's right. Is everything all set, Song? All ready. Okay. Come on. Oh, Daddy, my music box. Oh. Well, I'll get it, darling. So, take these things out of the car. Story? The overactive imagination of a small child? What about Minna? She said something touched her. No, hugged her. An affectionate ghost. More imagination? Maybe. I guess the only thing that really matters is the difference it made in Anne's life with her father. How it happened is anybody's guess. And why? We'll leave that to your imagination. In a moment, I'll be back and tell you something about next week's venture into the world of the unknown. Perhaps the most remarkable case of psychic phenomena ever recorded is the one you'll see next week. I can't describe it because the men to whom it happened could not agree as to what it was. But they never forgot it, and neither will you.
Thank you.